You ready? Yep. Hello, this is Angela Anderson, and thank you for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting a really fun project, I think. It's a coffee mug, and this was viewer choice. We had some ladies show up early to the live stream this evening when I was doing my example, and they gave me the idea for the colors. So thank you to those who were here. I don't remember who it was, but my husband Mark is here with me helping with the live chat tonight. Hey, everybody. And we are going to try to do, I think we'll have time to do two canvases. This one was really fast. Um, it's very kind of impressionist style. It's not super perfect. Um, very painterly, I would say. So uh, we're going to try to keep our brush strokes loose. I went ahead and uh, prepped it with a coat of yellow oxide, which you could pretty much use any color underneath, something warm, probably even an orange or a um, brighter yellow or red might be pretty. I don't know. Um, our, we're using acrylics tonight too, if I didn't mention that already, and we're really only going to need two brushes. Um, I uh, used a large one to put on the background of these. These are 8 by 8 inch canvas panels. They're really cheap, um, inexpensive. You could use whatever size canvas you want, but I thought squares would be cute for the coffee mugs um, and fit it just about perfectly. So, um, but as you can see, I did this one on a longer um, canvas, so you could do it vertically on a canvas as well. Just whatever floats your boat. So, um, the colors are a new color that I haven't used yet. I think I've used the yellow, but I know I haven't used this blue. It's a manganese blue. It's a very bright blue, blue greenish, um, transparent, super vivid, and um, I just love how it looked. Now, it's kind of close to phthalo blue, so if you don't have it, you don't have to go out and buy it. You could probably use phthalo blue, maybe tone it down with just a little bit of white because this is a little bit uh, lighter in, uh, in color probably than phthalo. Um, Quinacridone magenta, this is cadmium yellow deep. So it's just a little bit more on the orangey side of the spectrum. And the reason I did that is because I got out my um, color wheel. Thank you, honey. <laughs> and uh, I picked manganese blue first, and then I wanted to see what would be the triad colors to go with it. And a violet red, which was the quinacridone magenta, fit in that, and then an orangey yellow. So um, your cad red medium would be the regular yellow, and this would just be a little bit on the orange side. So if you don't have that, you could probably add just a touch of uh, cadmium orange or even um, a little bit of your red color maybe would help make it a little bit more orangey. So... I hope that makes sense. And then we've got white and black, and that's it. Um, very simple color palette, and we'll make purples and all this other colors from that. And we're going to make our brown, but if you don't want to make your brown, you could use um, burnt umber for it. So you can see we kind of did little hearts in our coffee mug. I think it'll be cute. And you can, by all means, change your color palette to match your kitchen, whatever works for you. So I'm going to move that out of the way and we'll get started. Did you mention what uh, brushes you're using? You said just two. Oh, just two brushes. Sorry. Yes. Um, this is a uh, number six bright. It's about a half inch bright uh, Robert Simmons titanium. And this is the Robert Simmons number four round that I use almost every video. So um, just a super flexible, all multi-purpose brush. So let's do this fun background. I think we're going to do coordinating backgrounds on these. So one will be um, these colors, and then I think we'll do the other one with like a red or orangey red mug with uh, blue in the background and purple down here. So we'll kind of switch it up a little bit. So for the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and just make myself a purple with the manganese and quinacridone. You're going to need a little bit extra manganese because it's so transparent. Both of the colors are actually transparent, so and we can add a little tiny bit of white to them to help them 
show up on this canvas a little bit. And I'm just going to brush them on really quickly. Grab a nice big thing of blue there. Grab some more of the quinacridone, mix it on the canvas. And we're just going to kind of work these colors down. I don't want the background too blue though, so I'm going to grab some more quinacridone and some white. And we're just going to make this nice and painterly back here. So I'm going to get some more just straight quinacridone now. And I'm going to kind of do dark over here, and then I'll do kind of lighter colors on this side. So this is hitting my... I'm trying to see if I have something to put under there. I need to tilt this away from my lights a little bit. <coughs> Maybe if I do this. Well, it's shiny, and you can't see the colors that I'm using. It's shining right on it. Now... It just kind of needs to be tilted slightly. Mix up a little bit more purple, grab some white. And I'm going to do the horizon line right about here. So I'm just going to come down there. We'll kind of figure, fix the horizon line issues there. Might do some sweeping. Just kind of have fun with this. Let it kind of work out your frustrations. <laughs> your post-Christmas stress. Hope your everybody's Christmas went well. We had a really nice time with just our family. The boys. Santa was good to us. Yes, it was nice <laughs> and quiet and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Good weather. Yeah, it was a little warm here. Mm -hmm. Okay, this side is kind of getting a little bit more lavender treatment. I'm going to grab a little bit more quinacridone and ran out. And go get some more blue too because I'm going to need some more for my mug. Sorry, honey. Mark's over there blinking. And just the slime on the dish there. Sorry. Came across kind of loud. Okay. Is That's that better? Our, that's better. Let's do a little bit of orange in this corner here. We'll grab a little bit of our yellow and in some kind of orangey warmer tones over here leave your brush strokes showing so kind of leave all that kind of nice stuff happening and I'm also kind of letting some of this background color show through in places too I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's little pockets where I've got the background color peeking through. Okay, doing quinacridone up there in the corner. At the top there, we'll just blend it out into our purple. We'll get some some brighter orange, the quinacridone yellow. I'm going to need a lot more yellow than magenta to get the orangey color. It just doesn't have as much tinting strength. There we go. I'm going to add some of that in there. This is very thick with paint, so if your paint starts to lift on you, you'll need to just let it dry and you can do some more layers on top. So it's very likely that it'll start to dry fairly quickly with acrylics. Or if you have a professional blow dryer well, on standby. True. I'll have you work your magic here in a minute. Okay. <laughs> 
Thank you, honey. You're I'm here for you. Ready. Doing, doing the most difficult jobs. <laughs> hey, it's a good job. Yeah, somebody in chat had said, you know, can't wait to see what you guys, you know, paint for us. And like, well. Yeah, <laughs> what you guys paint for yeah. us. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Mark, what, you, what are you going to be painting tonight? <laughs> It would look much, much different, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got kind of a progression from dark to light, purpley. Hope those colors are coming through on the camera there. Good. Okay. And I feel like I can maybe do a little bit more of the purpley blue over here it's gonna start not there we go just a few little streaks of the purpley blue okay don't wanna whoop I don't know if you can see that <clears throat> let's clean that out and we'll do some yellow foreground I'm going to use yellow and white, and then I'll pick up some of this orangey color that we mixed, and we'll just use those colors down here. And it's really not going to have to do a whole lot because it's already got those orange, orangey reds from the yellow oxide underneath. But we'll do this side a little bit darker, and we'll do this side. A bit brighter. It's picking up the color here. That's fine. Actually, we're going to do our light source coming from this side, so it'd be lighter here. So this side's actually going to be a little bit darker. Sorry, opposite what I said. So we'll do a little bit of the reddish down here. Might even do a little bit of purple. We'll put our mug in. We'll make sure it has a shadow underneath it. So we're going to put our mug in right about here. And if I don't hit it, I can add a little bit more to it later. Just working wet into wet here quickly. So we can get some nice bright yellow right here in front of the mug. And then some brighter solid yellow down here and if you notice I just kind of set my paint down grab some paint I'm still I really don't have a ton on the, on my brush I'm not loading it all the way up to here um, it's staying kind of down here uh, toward the tip and I'm just going to put it on my canvas until it sort of runs out and then I can blend so that's when I go back over and just lightly kind of push the paint around once I kind of have it set on the canvas so I think that looks pretty good. We'll uh, do that. Let's put some yellow up here. I don't know if it'll stay, but Oop, that's Spencer in the background. I don't know if anybody could hear that. He's playing a game off there. <laughs> I'm excited. We'll do some yellow back here so it's like picking up some of that light source, maybe. Okay, that's good. We'll, uh, Mark, you can blow dry that for me, if you will. And I'll work on the other one. Get that other background going. So this time... I thought we'd do the mug, kind of an orangey-yellow color. And then we'll do the background blue. So we'll start out with blue and probably do the, it's going to turn it kind of green here underneath the, <clears throat> add some white to make it show up. Look how bright that blue is. It's so pretty. And do it again, kind of about, it's about a third of the way down. 
the canvas or horizon line is. Just dabbing on the paint here. Maybe do a little bit of teal. So I'll add a little bit of yellow to that. Some white. We'll make kind of a teal blue with the yellow. Don't add too much yellow or it'll turn orange or it'll turn green. So we want it kind of turquoise. There we go. Some of that in there. We'll do it on our lighter side. Putting in some white over here. I really love this color. I haven't, I've never actually painted with it before. I've, well, I, I take that back. I think I used it on some Robin's eggs uh, at one point, but it's been a while. Such a pretty color. This is very, very transparent though, so if you are having trouble getting it to cover, you just add a little bit of white or another uh, opaque color that'll help it cover better. Let's add just a teeny tiny bit of the red. We'll make a little bit of purple. The purple is going to go down here too, so... We could use a little bit of it down here. This will be kind of our red color down here, but we can also use some of it up here in our corners to darken it up. Purple is going to be the darkest color in your uh, on the spectrum in this painting. It's naturally a very dark color, so mixing the blue and purple makes it, or blue and uh, magenta makes a really nice dark color. And I'm just kind of doing varying shades of this blue. You notice this one's just blue and white, but I've added a little bit more of the white. It's got a little bit of the purple in there, so it's kind of turning it more of a true blue color. I'm not cleaning out my brush, just kind of letting the colors happen. And the, that blue is which one again? Manganese. Mag manganese blue? Manganese. Okay. Yep. You okay? Yeah, just knocked my knee against the Ouch. The thing there. It's all right. Just go on without me. Maybe <laughs> all right. <laughs> Did you get paint on your hands too, honey? No, not this time. Okay. I think I'm okay. Oh, sure no intervention to that. Yeah. We would have to stop the show when <laughs> taking care of that real quick. I know. All right, so let's grab the quinacridone magenta with some white. We'll do our foreground in red in this one. Honestly, you could do this with any color scheme that you wanted to. It would be basically the same thing. Just kind of figure out where your light source is coming from. Do a dark side and a light side. So this is my light side. This side will be dark over here. So I'm going to make that purple, which is our darkest color. And add it down here. On this side, because the mug's going to be interrupting that light and making this dark. If the light's coming from this direction. It's lighting up this wall. It's going to light up this side of the mug. And then this other side of the mug in the ground is going to be dark. Do that really pretty bright pink in this side. That's pretty. The background up here, I kind of did like X strokes, and this on the foreground here, I'm kind of doing longer horizontal brush strokes. I'll just emphasize that this is a horizontal surface. So, 
I did the same thing on the other painting. Add a little bit of water if your paint's getting dry. Really don't need a whole lot of water with this technique. You want to keep your paints fairly thick. The water will dilute them. Okay, pretty. So, there's our two backgrounds. You now see that they kind of coordinate. And they'll coordinate even more when we get that blue mug on this one and the orangey mug on this one. I think I want some of this brighter pink in this background. So I'm just going to go back over this with some of this pink color and brighten it up. Okay. If you want to dry that one, honey, you can. This one is wet again, too. Yeah, go ahead and do both of them, because I wet this one down again. Oh, Two at a time. Can he do it, folks? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so... Here's our mascot, and we'll give him a coffee mug in his hand here. We take him out every show, and we add something new to him that kind of pertains to whatever we're doing. So today, since he's, we're doing coffee mugs, he'll get a little mug in his hand. He's Mark's creation, and this kind of just started by accident, but uh, Mark did a tutorial on how to draw a stick man, so if anybody is interested, that's on my Facebook ch page, Thankful Art. We'll do that. We'll do, even do it fancy a little. Okay. Actually, let me give it a little highlight since Mark's busy doing two canvases. We'll spruce it up and do extra fancy mug for our guy okay there we go <laughs> he's gotten three birds we've done three bird paintings in the last month we did the he started with the antlers we did the mountain scene and then the trees and then we lit up the tree so be interesting to see where he goes from here <laughs> Well, I guess next week he's going to have to get stilettos because we're doing stilettos for... I'll show you that. I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to redo this video because I really didn't love the colors that I used. Um, so, But I may just keep it as it is. I'm not sure how this week's going to go. Um, but anyhow, this will be our New Year's Eve project and it'll be recorded either way. So, um, oops, I just got paint on it. So that'll be fun. Are you ready? All right. Awesome. Get my example back here. Okay, so let me use chalk and I'll just draw it out real quick with some chalk. Oh, let me put a pen under there. That'll do it. There we go. Cut down on the shine a little bit maybe. Um, so we've got a lot of room to work with here. I'm going to probably put his handle somewhere off to here. The top of it, and we'll do the bottom right here. The top of it will be probably be about right here. And then I'm just going to do an oval for the opening. And then however you want to shape it. We'll give this one kind of straight sides and then we'll do the other one with kind of more of a rounded look. This line and this line should match. So that curve and that curve should be the same. Don't do it straight across. Just looking a little bit straight across, but it won't be when I paint it. And then our handle will come off to the side here and we'll keep it kind of narrow. We can give it a little bit of flip out there if we want to. 
might make it a little bit smaller. Nice thing about using chalk is you can erase it really easily with a damp cloth. Just don't rub too hard because that paint underneath is still a little bit uncured. Okay, then our coffee inside the mug is going to mimic this line, this curve. So we'll get a, maybe a little bit higher because there we go. Okay, simple as that. And then we'll have room up here for our little curly Q wispies to come over. I think the technical term for that is theme. <laughs> I call them curly Q wispies. That's curly Q wispies. Yes. Check. <laughs> Smart Alec. Just in case, if there's any scientists or engineers watching, <laughs> I stumbled upon the painting channel while they were going through YouTube. <laughs> you never know. They're like, Nervous. hey, wait a minute, I like coffee. Yeah, it could happen. You're, I mean, you happened upon the channel, but I mean, you kind of have to watch it. So I don't know that you'd be watching it if it wasn't for me to tell the truth. I mean, really, would you? <laughs> I no have comment? the right to remain silent. <laughs> Anything Mr. I say. Engineer. <laughs> can and probably would be used against me <laughs> <laughs> okay let's do this one we'll do <laughs> we'll do it with a nice big round and kind of do a bowl shape with it curve that around And here again, we're going to kind of do the same curve at the bottom there that we did at the top. We might need to do our oval a little bit bigger on this one. It's a little bit bigger mouth. Then the handle. We'll do a little teeny handle on this one. Like an espresso cup almost. Okay, that's about it. Super easy, and we'll do our steam later. I don't need to draw it out. We'll just freehand it. Okay, so let me grab the first one here. We'll do our colors. The blue, I need a lot of blue. These transparent colors don't, don't go very far. I kind of need a little bit more of them. Clean out your brush really well. You want the blue to be nice and bright. And this background is dry, so we should be able to jump right in. Let's grab just a little bit of white, make it a little bit more opaque. And I'm going to put my brush strokes in, in the direction that this cup is. I almost said growing. <laughs> it is uh, curving, I should say. So we'll start towards the top. This will be our dark side. The light's coming from this side. So as we put it in, whoops, put that a little bit too. Happy on that one. So we'll add a little bit more white and we'll just do a little bit more white on this side. Using the edge of my brush to kind of pull down and then I'll just pull across. I'll use the edge of it here to do the top rim. I have very little paint on my brush now, so I'm just going to kind of pull it softly toward the middle. I'm going to try to keep that middle part fairly dark blue, so 
might need to wipe my brush off. Get the extra white out of it. Grab that straight blue. There we go. It's going to look a little bit pale to start with. That's okay because we had to have this white undertone to get it to cover the background colors. Let's grab a little bit of the purple, mix a little bit of purple. We'll use purple on this side. Pull in from this edge. There's some purple. And I am leaving a little bit of that background showing through, so. Okay, that's good. Let's grab my number four round. Grab that purpley blue. And now this side is going to have the shadow because the light is not hitting it. The This part of the mug is covering. And then as it goes toward the middle here, it'll catch some light. So we'll start changing over to the brighter blue. And then this edge is going to be nice and bright like this side is. Okay, let me grab some white. I hope I'm not going too fast for you, but it's pretty easy. No, I'm keeping up. You're keeping up okay? Yep, I'm doing, I'm doing right. <laughs> Are you painting along with me tonight? Honey? Oh, no, no, I was just blow drying. <laughs> Do a bright highlight whoops along that top edge. Try to keep your original shape. Got a little bit low right there, so I'm gonna have to clean that up, but that's all right. Get that really dark purple right down in here. Really, it's the background color, so I guess I could have left just that showing through, but I wanted it's more of that blue color. There we go. Okay, so that's our, that's our basic mug. We'll do the handle, grab the manganese, and probably needed to start it up a little bit higher than I drew it, so I'm gonna do it, move it up a little bit. Curve it out and back down. It's actually working out, I've got some lighter color on my brush. It's giving me a highlight there. Alrighty. There we go. All the way down to here and then just kind of plop your brush down. It'll give you a little bit of a rounded edge there. We'll grab some of the purple Put some purple along here. It's gonna be dark back here. And it'll be dark down here. And then the light will hit it on the top and inside. Let me clean up my brush there. These paints are very they're moving around a lot on you, so you kind of you may want to, um, if if you're having trouble with them moving around, and when I say moving around, I mean they're kind of mixing in odd ways. Um, if you're having trouble with that, you can you can just let your layers dry a little bit before you do your next color combination. So you could do your darker colors and let that dry, and then come back in with your highlights. So ever works for you. Okay. Cute. Let's go ahead and do the other mug. We'll let that dry really well. Actually, let's go ahead and, uh, let's, yeah, we'll wait. We'll do the coffee all at once. <clears throat> I'm still going to add some more highlights to this one, but all right. This guy is going to have that orangey yellow color. Right. 
clean up all that blue because you don't want it to be mixing with our yellow. Now yellow is a color that, um, this yellow is actually fairly opaque, um, but a lot of times to get the vividness in a yellow, you're going to have to add white to either the background first and then layer on the yellow over the top, or I just like to add a little bit of white into my yellow. kind of saves an extra step. So grab some white and some yellow. And we'll, this is our light side, so we'll start over here with the bright color. Brightest, whitest yellow. And you can let some of the background color show through if you want. In the middle, we'll do more of the brighter yellow. And toward the bottom, too. And then on this side, we're going to grab some of this color. Let me spray my can my palette here. Keep it moist and see if I can grab it. Yeah, there we go. There's that orange that I used for the shadow over here. So we'll use that as our dark side, the dark side of our yellow mug. And pull in some of the brighter yellow and we'll just blend it back over the top there. Let your brush stroke show. Keep it very loose. I'm going to switch over to my other one. I didn't draw in my coffee on this one, so the coffee is going to go right in there. It's going to mimic this line above it. We'll do the, the light color right in the middle here. Start there. Got a little bit of white in it, but not much. And this brush does not want to blend for me. What are you laughing about? Uh, I'm not going to comment. What? No, that's okay. People just wanted me to take over your, this channel, apparently, because they saw my dance moves. and. Oh, <laughs> they want you to dance again? They want to see more dancing. Yeah, so. Nice. So, hey, if you're watching right now, go ahead and click that thumbs up because come on you got to give a thumbs up for coffee at least true the painting eh. but coffee <laughs> come on give it up for coffee a bunch of thumbs up but we're glad that you joined us go get yourself a cup of coffee that's right maybe not mona because it's like 1 30 in the morning over there so yeah <laughs> before you in australia it's midday have another cup of coffee <laughs> goodness or if you're like me and don't like coffee yeah. have some tea but we still love you i know i am weird you, you can't be 100 percent perfect there. <laughs> practically perfect in every way just yes. like mary poppins <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember mary poppins drinking any coffee either so i don't know Okay, adding that orange that's our shadow color over here where the inside of the mug is going to get a shadow. And then I need to bring my yellow up a little bit higher on this side. This is my bright white yellow. And the top rim kind of will get some light. So all the way around it will kind of have a little bit of a highlight. Somehow this side got a little jacked up for some reason. <clears throat> there we go. Let's 
Let's get a good hard edge on that inside shadow here if we can. There we go. Do the handle. They're going pretty fast. Not too bad. You could always get fancy with these and add some dots or stripes or other decorations to the handles and mugs themselves. I, that's almost what I did today. I kind of was looking through some Mary Englebright mugs and they were so pretty with all these kind of different details but then I thought oh my gosh that's like a two hour painting so wanted to keep it light for a Tuesday night audience we try to keep these Tuesday night shows a little bit shorter and more beginner level projects and if you're new to my channel um, welcome and we do we do projects for beginners and more intermediate projects so beginner projects are like Tuesday nights and then the more intermediate projects usually are on Saturdays so because it's hashtag feed Mark night Mark does work on Tuesdays usually although he's on vacation this week well you're making me work though I so, am making um, you work so you're not technically on vacation today right, not right now not right now hey if I have to work you you gotta help me so okay <laughs> <laughs> I was grumbling today. <laughs> I was not. I I was not feeling the coffee mug this morning. Like, but I really like how these are turning out. I like. I like it when it works out. So okay, so I'm just adding that darker reddish orange to the inside. This part will be. Dark, and then I'm going to add a highlight to the outer edge with some white. This edge will get, get some light and it'll kind of come around like that. It's looking really weird right now, but we'll figure it out. It's turning pink because of our highlight color underneath. We're just going to have to let it dry. And this side is actually dark too. Now I'm looking at my picture. I like to whisper too. <laughs> Quiet. I think they can hear you even if you're whispering. You think you can hear me even if I'm whispering? I'm thinking. I'm sorry. Okay. I get quiet when I'm thinking. <laughs> there we go. So that mug handle is kind of dark back there. And then the yellow comes up around. And up on the inside here, pretty bright. Okay, there we go. That's looking a little bit better. Um, we'll let that dry. We'll grab our other one. I'm just gonna pop back and forth here. So here's them side by side so far. See, see how the combination of the colors is working out. I'm liking it. I think. Yeah. The magenta dries a lot darker than it looks when you first put it on. All right, so I'm going to, this is dry. I'm going to go ahead and take my wet towel here and just clean off my chalk marks so that I can see what I've done. And we'll mix some brown. So we've got the carbon black here. I'll just pull out a nice big spot of it. 
and we'll grab this whole thing of yellow and we'll grab some quinacridone magenta. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And depending on how much red you use, it'll be more of a reddish brown. If you use more of the yellow, it'll be more of a yellowy brown. This is a pretty good color. Let's add a little bit of white to it so we can see the undertones. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I want it more on the yellow side since this is a coffee. So we'll, yeah, that's a little bit better. I'm just going to have to mess up my whole yellow there. There we go. Now we'll add a little bit of white. There we go. Okay, like I said, if you wanted to, if you don't want to mix the color, you can totally use... Um, I'm going to mix my white straight over here. So this will be my lighter color. I'll add a little bit of this red to it. This will be the kind of cream color. I'm mixing up a lot because I've got both coffee mugs to do. So. I'll go ahead and use the dark along that dark edge. Be real dark the same place that our shadows are and then this side will be a little bit lighter. I'll go ahead and put the dark in and we'll Lighten it up. Kind of a creamy latte. And then we'll put a decoration in it. Like our, see how our barista skills are here. <laughs> Mixing your brown, it just kind of helps unify your painting. You know, you don't have to introduce a new color. And then these colors you already know match because they've, they're all coming from our current palette. So, all right, so let's grab a little bit of this creamy white here, this lightest of our colors. I'm going to spin my brush to a point if ish. It's not one to do. It's kind of thick with paint. And I'm just going to kind of start out with a little heart right there. And then I'm going to drag my brush through the wet paint and make some concentric circles in it. Like that, through that black, the dark. So I got over the top of my heart right here, so I'm just going to touch it up a little bit with the dark. You can always go back in and like maybe add some more of the dark around the outside edge there if you need to. If you cover too much of it up, you can kind of do in between these, darken them up. I wouldn't fuss with it too much, though. It doesn't have to be really perfect, perfect, because, of course, you know, the latte, whatever, is not perfect in your mug anyways. Okay, good enough. I'll let that dry before we put our steam in. We'll do this one. Wispy curly cues. Wispy curly cues, the sax. Not exactly. steam. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot. Keep me honest here. Okay, this is where I can kind of clean up this oval here and make sure I've got all my proportions right. I'm going to use my damp cloth, make sure that this 
handle was not quite dry there. I picked up a little bit of paint. There we go. Make sure that this this line and this line match, right? So we want to stay about the same distance away. So this one's going to have to come in a little bit more so that that oval makes sense. And just go ahead and fill in that whole thing with this dark brown. There we go. What other shapes can we make in here? I don't know. Here, we'll do this. This other mug has got kind of like concentric hearts or like hearts kind of coming down together. Like almost like a leaf shape. And then little swirlies around the outside. These are all technical terms, so not everybody knows the right terminology. Swirlies, curly cues, you know. Did you go to barista school? I I did not, but no. I did go to art school, so okay. that's where so I those learned are some art of this. Terms. Right, right. Not coffee terms. <laughs> Not necessarily coffee terms. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab my grab my flat again. And let's just put in some final little details. I want to brighten up that yellow mug just slightly. With what color paint? Huh? With what color paint? This is cadmium yellow deep. And we'll put out fresh quinacridone because it's kind of muddied up over here too. I still have enough blue, I think. I'm happy with my background, I think. So I'm not gonna mess with this. Was not wanting to go on there. All right, sorry. Uh, okay, so but I want to brighten this up because it didn't. It stayed pretty dark. So I'm gonna grab some pink there and make a very light pink. This is my magenta color. We'll use it very light. There we go. Just going to kind of dry brush some little highlights on the table right in front of the mug. I'm not going to go right up to it necessarily, but just kind of want to brighten this side. It'll emphasize the darker side over here, the dark side over there. Speaking of which, Carrie Fisher died today. Yeah. Sad. She was very young, too. But I think she was on the light side. She was on the light side. It just made me think of Star Wars. Okay. All right. She was very much on the light side. So our condolences to her family. Debbie Reynolds, her mom. I'm sure she's pretty devastated. Okay, I'm going to grab, made up, made some more of that dark purple color. I'm just going to go right up underneath my mug, my mug, and to the shadow side here. Just darken that up a little bit more. mixing with my light color there. Okay. Very good. Let's I think this one's okay. I'm gonna maybe clean up that edge a little bit right there with a little bit of this light red. Got a little bit off. And we'll put some of this light pink up here in this highlight side so that it matches our 
not going to even worry about that being being there. If you get it over the top of your mug there, you can use your wet cloth and just kind of wipe off that wet paint. I don't want it so close to it. But I want some bright highlights on this side of my didn't make them quite bright enough. That'll help make sure that it matches this other one over here too. Of course you could always go with red instead of the magenta colors. If your kitchen's red, you could just do primary colors for your coffee mug. More of a regular, regular blue and regular red, regular yellow, not the orangey yellow. Okay, that's good. I don't want to get too fussy with it. And then let's add some of the brighter yellow over on this side. It's not quite bright enough. some white and that cadmium yellow deep I'll brighten up this mug first put that bright color right along that edge and we'll grab that middle value, the straight color, and we'll pull it back this way. There we go. Choppy brush strokes. Very light pressure. Get some white. Do white along the top here with really bright. And then some along this back edge here. Just with the edge of my brush, you can switch to your number four round if you can't get the right angle with your flat brush. I'm going to go ahead and this one is kind of big for this. Try to get it to, doesn't want to go around that corner for me. too lazy to switch my brush out right now. Okay, there we go. So that's looking pretty much done on that one. Just a little bit more white right there. Just a few like random brush strokes. Just to break up that edge. That one's pretty well done. Add a little bit more of that yellow down in here. There we go. Might darken up this little bit right here. We'll make that orange color. That was our shadow. We've got a quiet chat today. Nobody's asking any questions. Oh, people just are talking about me dancing. <laughs> I just can't get <laughs> over the awesomeness of it. Yes, yes. It was pretty awesome. Pretty epic. I've told them they've seen all my dance moves already. <laughs> oh, they're wanting you to dance again? We'll pull, pull that out on special occasions, maybe for the 50,000 subs show. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Mix up a little bit, kind of a medium, 
value. We'll do a little bit of orange on this side. Not quite as dark as that shadow color, but just kind of blend in toward the middle a little bit. There we go. It's looking a little bit better. Okay, I feel like the mug is out of shape over here. This side is shaping a little bit. I'm going to bring it out just slightly. So we do have a question okay. asking, how would you make this look like tea? Um, if you did it, I would probably do the water in a, in a lighter, lighter, uh, either brown or even a greenish tone. So you might add just a tiny bit of blue to your color and um, probably start with, with a white or a very, very light tone, you know, maybe like this, and then add white highlights in it to brighten it up. So, and you idea. would put a little sad face in it <laughs> instead of hard because it's not coffee. <laughs> No. No. And you could probably put a little, you know, a little teardrop. Tea, <laughs> tea bag tag right here sticking out. I should have done one tea. Oh, well. That's a, that would have been smart. Okay, so that one's pretty much done except for our wispy thing. So not too hard. Um, I might add just a little bit brighter white to our coffee there, but when, when we put in our our smoke will do that. Our sm smoke, sorry, steam. I know you're laughing at me. Let's put in some of this blue green color in the mug over here since we didn't do that the first time. So we'll grab a little bit of the blue and white, keep it fairly light, and we'll grab a little bit of our yellow. A little tiny bit is all you need. We'll just add a little bit, oh, a little bit more blue. Okay, we got two questions here. Okay. First one is asking about the light source and shadow. Yes. So where's, I guess, the light, the light source, source is, is coming from this direction here. Okay. From the left to mm -hmm. the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was hidden here, here, back along here. It's pretty much the whole top of the mug is getting a little bit of light. The handle is just shadowed along this kind of part where the this might be hiding around the corner here. So, okay. And then the wall is getting a little bit light too. All right. And then the second question was, uh, how or what would you suggest for a beginner to learn how to do uh, shading? Um, I would. I think just practicing is the main thing. Um, this is a really good good uh, shading. Um, project actually uh, it's not I don't think it's on the difficult scale I think it's pretty pretty easy I would say so the uh, I would totally do this with kids and I think that they could totally do it so I mean anything that I could feel comfortable doing with kids I think is fine for a first-time painting you know the the handle is the hardest part you could leave this part just solid if you weren't comfortable with the um you know whatever so what were you going to ask him oh i know that you have said in the past that like the dark makes stuff push back and the light brings it forward is mm -hmm, that correct mm -hmm. so kind of give that also depth right. and right probably has nothing to do with shading huh no no it does okay yeah because yeah, that's we'll do the light blue along this edge here really make it bright go. Yeah, that makes it 3D just by having the lighter color on this side or the darker color on this side. It, and and I'm doing my brush strokes in that same curve that the mug uh, shape is. So I'm not going straight across with it. I'm kind of curving them a little bit as I pull around. And it just will add to the effect. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
If you get too much of the white, you just go back in with your darker color and just do it in the opposite direction over the top. And like I said, if you put the you put your paint down first and then just kind of push it around with your brush. You don't have to have a lot of paint on there. For it to uh, work. So this is definitely a good blending project. Um, and make a little bit more of that purple. It's a good, it's a good uh, color mixing project too, I think, because we're only using the three colors and we're getting, you know, oranges, purples, uh, all kinds of different variations out of just these three main colors. So, doing the purple along this side a little bit, just uh, flicking my brush through that paint. There we go. The darker and lighter you go, the more the effect of the roundedness you'll get. So don't be afraid of going really, really dark and really, really light. If your little nug is looking a little bit flat, that could be the reason why you may just not be putting enough of the emphasis on the darks and lights. There we go. That's even brighter. I got all that white out of my brush. It's even darker, I mean. You grab a little bit of the blue and mix back this direction over the top. Mix it in. Back and forth. All right. I think we're ready for our little wispies. What do you think? Oh, we didn't do... I need to do some more brighter yellows on this front side here. We'll get some white. A little bit of our bright yellow. We'll do... Yeah, really nice and bright right up against that let's use that bright yellow back here to keep from getting a, a hard edge you just kind of wisp out your I sort of lift up on my brush where I want the paint to sort of feather out so if you lift up as you flick it it'll kind of give you these kind of feathered edges here so that you don't have a hard line I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of brighter yellow back here that maybe the escaped. And just streak through the colors there so that it's not so hard. Okay, that's good, I think. I'm going to grab a little bit more bright white and just do a couple little random brush strokes with the really bright yellow so that matches our mug over here. Oops. Wipe that off with a damp rag. Okay. I'm going to touch that up because it got a little bit So we're good. So let's use our number four round and we'll get some clean white over here. And I'm not going to load up too much and I'm not really going to thin down my paint. Normally I would thin down the paint um, if I was doing, oh, how did I do that? I must have stuck it out in my palette. I'm glad I saw that. That would have been a disaster if I'd set it against that. Um, oh, I did. I got it on this side. What in the world did I do? I'm mean, like, I got it on there. Okay, well, I'm going to have to clean that up. <clears throat> Move that out of the way. Put that up underneath it so it... There we go. 
All right, but this in this case because I want it to be kind of uh, steamy, I or like uh, transparent, I'm gonna use very little paint on my brush and I'm gonna dry brush these. So I'm just gonna start in here and. Do these little curly things. If you get it too dark, you can just kind of touch your finger over. You could also use zinc white, which is a transparent white, which would even be more. more you could use you could use a glitter. Because coffee is so magical, it's just <laughs> has magical powers. Glitter? Yeah. Glitter is kind of like, shows like magic. <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> it is kind of weird that I'm doing this coffee projects and I don't drink it at all. But a lot of people do, so to each his own. <laughs> live and let live, huh? Right. Okay. <laughs> this is this is for my friend Terry. She may even get these for her house. She does book club at her house, and she she has a big coffee bar with all kinds of different coffees in her Keurig, and but she always has tea for me. So somebody asked if there's any friend. reason why you're not using mixing white. Uh, just because I already had it on my palette. Okay. Just laziness really it it doesn't and really you don't need need it I mean you can kind of get the same effect by just dry brushing it kind of man I'm glad one of us knew what that was it's zinc white it's it's just that transparent white okay transparent mixing white or you know whatever no you can use whatever white you want so oh look it made a heart cute Okay, so we'll just put a little bit of this white highlights in the coffee just to kind of make it make sense with the, yeah, I don't know if I like that. I'm going to rehydrate my paint there. Just soften that up a little bit with the cream color. Just don't want these to start any with these hard edges. Kind of cover up that edge a little bit. There we go. Cute. Wipe off my chalk. Put my finger on my paint there. Just lifted that whole thing of paint. This is me. If you've never been with me on my show, this is pretty much normal for me. Put my fingers in the paint. Look at my hands. I'm a messy painter. That's just how it goes. You'll just have to live with it. I, I get by. <laughs> it works for me. Whatever. Whatever works. I gotta clean up my little fudge over here. Which I just still don't know how I did that. <clears throat> Alright, so let's grab a little bit of that cream color, add it to our white. It might soften up that steam. We'll do a big long one. Over here, we'll do another one lower. Maybe do one this direction. Really big one. And we'll call that good, I think. They don't have to match. In fact, it's probably better if they don't matchy-matchy. You know what I mean? Let me pull that one in a little bit. Oops. There we go. I'm going to 
pull that one towards the center a little bit. All right, I think that's good. Now to finish, I might, I thought I might splatter a little bit of like coffee down here. I don't know if I can do it without getting it on my mug, so I'm gonna try it. We wouldn't spill coffee. There would Get be no coffee soft, on the side. kind of cream, creamy brown, and just do a few little splatters. Down might get a little bit on my mug, too. It'll show up really good against this one. There we go. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tonight. Oh, yeah, I've got uh, something to show you, too. Um, but thank you for watching the painting portion. I'm going to set these aside really quick. Make sure I've got it all nice and clean. My hands are a disaster. I should have done this at the beginning of the show, probably. I'm going to have to try to make sure they're not, <laughs> not at all. Well, we're just going to hope for the best here. Okay, so I wanted to share. This was my gift from Mark is called a Robin Bobbin Robin mm -hmm. by Denny Pocock or she's an artist Pocock Pocock I believe that's the pronunciation she's an artist right? from the UK and look he matches our little bird that we did last week so I'm going to send her a picture of them together it's a little Robin so I love that and then Mona sent me a snowman. He's so cute all the way from Sweden. Here, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see him better. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little hat that sticks up. So there's yeah. him. And then he doesn't fall she sent, them. I know, I don't want him to get paint on him. Okay, I'm going to put him aside. And then she sent the best Mork chocolate. Yes. Not sure how you say it, but it's going to be yummy. It's dark chocolate from Sweden. And it's been a struggle to keep Mark from eating that this week, yes. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and she also made me a card. <laughs> Just so sweet. I love it. So this and the snowman are going up in my collection. If you know me, I've got a collection. So got a card. And she made this from my painting. Chris PG and Gail Hutchinson sent me this one with some a gift inside, so very appreciated. Mm -hmm. And then this one was an original by Stevie Dickerson. Isn't it cute? It's got, I love the angel. They're decorating the tree. So he's also going over on with my snowman for sure so anyhow thank you guys we had a question coming in okay asked if if you wanted less whimsical steam and i think i just missed it less whimsical steam yes uh, would you use a glaze or transparent white you could yeah sure okay. yeah um and if you don't want it curlies you know you probably could do the steam you know more in a just a serpentine straight mm manner with just a few little almost like a flame okay you know right yeah i would just look up reference photos but yeah i mean you get the you see how transparent that is just by dry brushing it um i mean you honestly don't need the transparent white but jimmy you can use it this one got a little bit brighter i like this one better because i added a little bit of that uh cocoa color to it so anyhow Thank you guys so much for watching tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. Mark and I do. And we will not be live on Saturday, but we will have a video for you to watch. And then we'll be live again next Tuesday. And next Tuesday, I think I'm going to do, well, it's Mark's first day back to work. So I'm going to have to come up with an easy project for him. I don't know. Well, it's going to be New Year's. So we might think of something like that in there. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. not the look you just gave me. No, we won't. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just have to look at my schedule and see what I had. 
I don't have anything for that date yet scheduled, so we'll figure it out. But uh, anyhow. Well, it's been great. been a great 2016. It has Thanks been, for yes, yes, that's true. It's our last show of 2016. Mm -hmm. So um, we have really appreciated you guys, and we've made a lot of changes this year, and I'm really glad to be doing live shows again, and having Mark help me now has been a huge boost. I love having him with me. It's He's a good partner, so... And I'm glad that we, uh, the audience seems to enjoy him mm. as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyhow, uh, God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And we will see you next Tuesday.